some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey everyone, welcome back to Board Games Unlocked, and today I'm doing a discussion over Small World, which you might be wondering, this game came out like 15 years ago, why am I doing a discussion over it? Uh, well, it's because I have actually recently replayed it after many, many, many years, and over those years, tons of games have come out that it's just nice to do a discussion over uh, an old game that I believe still holds up tremendously. Um, this is get by Days of Wonder, and they don't release a lot of games, but pretty much a lot of the games they do release just slap. <laughs> like, this one uh, is definitely one of those, because it's an area control game that is not meant to be taken like too seriously, which is very rare. A lot of area control games have, you know, tons of mechanisms and are a lot more war gamey or a lot more serious than this one. But they managed to actually make it very lighthearted and have a ton of replayability. Now I, funny enough, as I was um because I last time I played this I taught it to uh one person who had played it just once and then two people who were brand new to just board gaming in general. And as I was explaining this game, I was like, man, this sounds super boring. <laughs> like, uh, cause you were like, yep, nope, you pick a, you pick one of these races and then you just kind of place tokens on different areas of the map. Whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. And, and you're like, okay, well that's kind of odd. Like, but then once you start seeing the creativity of the races and their special powers and that meticulous decision on when you need to go into decline uh, so you can get a new race to try and just get the most points is somehow just really fun. And a testament to the game because it was able to be taught to completely new gamers in general. I'm trying to remember when, when this game came out. Small world. Not snow. I hate the app of Board Game Geek because it's like, like I I mistyped, uh. Small world as snow. Two thousand nine. Anyway, I miss. I, it was Snarl World, and it's like, no idea. Not even a little bit of what. <laughs> I have no clue. Anyway, this game came out in two thousand nine, and it's had expansions over the years, and I actually have, uh. Three of them, I have, yeah, the Grand Dames, the Small World Curse, and Be Not Afraid. And they've released other uh, standalone games, like the Small World Underground, I think is what it was called. And I had that one, but because it was kind of a standalone game, I never really got it. And then they have the Small World of Warcraft, but ultimately I decided to keep this one. And then I also have this bag, or this deck of Tales and Legends, so... I don't know. I don't know what those do. But yeah, it's it's just so cool that you have so many different races and those races have special abilities like the uh, the gypsies. They leave a, a coin whenever they completely abandon a region. The elves, uh, when, when they take casualties, they just go back to the supply. Um, the, like the, 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 the rat men don't have a special benefit, but they have, you know, the highest number that comes with it. Uh, like, they have eight total units. But then, you have all those races, so in the base game, there were one, two, three, four, five, there were 14 races, and then these expansions added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, so ten more races total, which is 24 races, and then you have special powers that, that's like flying. Hey, you don't have to place adjacent. You can go anywhere. You have a uh, merchant, which is you just collect a bonus coin at the end of each region. Um, commando, conquering a region takes one less token. And there are... One, two, three, four, five. There are 20 special powers in the uh, base game. And then the expansions added... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So 27 powers. And the really cool thing of Small World that makes this game basically infinitely replayable is that no races or special powers are tied to one another. Like, they can every game, 
every single game you just shuffle the powers, shuffle the races, and then put six out and just combine them. And some there's like no power in my opinion that's like bad. There might be powers that are better with other races, but there's like you're just gonna get really cool, versatile combos. And some races might be really good at the very beginning of the game. Some might be good at the very end of the game. Uh, like uh, an expansion um, ability historian gets a coin for each race that's in decline and then each race that goes into decline. And so they just get a coin for that. And it's like, oh, that's really neat. Um, but that's not really that good at the end of the game. But it could be really neat if it's tied, like the last game we had, where it was tied with the skeletons, and the skeletons have, like, huge longevity. So the historian skeletons get to stick around for a long time, and they're going to see a lot of races that go into decline. Uh, and I just think that for such a simple concept, this game still... It's it's not like go, you know, go through the motions of just like, ah, oh, it doesn't really matter what I pick. You're thinking about, you know... What race is good, when it's good, how you want to use it, how long do you want to keep it, because eventually you're going to have to put races into decline, which means that you're no longer using them. Uh, the way this game was described um, to me was this is risk, but with all the bad parts taken out. And I'm like, it kind of does have a risk feel to it. Like, just all you're doing really is using your race's uh, tokens to conquer areas. And the areas that are being conquered sometimes won't matter to you at all, and other times they will. So I think that that is extremely fascinating. Like, one race that was a combo was the Bivoking uh, Leprechauns. And that was disgusting because the Leprechauns can get Pot of Gold. They leave Pot of Gold tokens on their spot. And if they're still there by that person's next turn, they get it. So they have ways of generating more points. And the Bivoking, they put encampments in spots, and that gives them uh, an extra defense. So not, so it's like, okay, yeah, I'm going to get an extra coin at the beginning of my turn because it's it's really difficult for you to take this from me. Not impossible, because it's very simple to just be like, okay, I need five units to take that. But if you, but that's like all of your, <laughs> you know, units. That you have for the turn it's like is that really worth it or i can try and spread myself out a little bit more to get two or three more points or i can stop you from getting more units to extend that race because whenever you attack one another it's again so simple it's two of your tokens plus whatever tokens are in that spot so if someone has three tokens there it costs you five to take that from them but then they take all those off they save one of them uh, or they remove one of them from the game, and then the other ones they save. So eventually you're going to be spreading yourself out really thin that you just can't get anything anymore. It's just, with games that come out, um, like, now, that it's it's nice to go back fucking, what, 15 years ago? And... Just be reminded that games were still being developed that were fantastic and that still hold up 15 years later. Like, yeah, I haven't touched this in probably like five, six years. Like, that's just, just because I'm constantly playing new games. and But I've always held on to it in my collection. I cycle through games all the time. Of I don't like to classify myself as like a collector because I just look at it as sunk money. It's just like, well, that was a waste of money. I haven't played that in two years. But there are certain games that I just like to keep in my collection. And Small World has always been one of them. Because it's like, yeah, no, I remember that game being really good. And when I had new people coming over and teaching them, I'm like, you know what? I haven't played Small World in forever. I'm going to give it... Let's give it a shot. Let's see if it holds up. And it, it really does. So, like, don't pass this one up. Like, don't... Uh, I mean, and like I said, they have different themes. They didn't really expand upon those other themes as much. Like I said, this one has three expansions for it, and then you have the underground one, which I don't remember. And the underground came out uh, like two years after. I don't think it had expansions. Um, okay, well, technically the underground is showing expansions, so they must be backwards. Like, they must be compatible, so... Yeah. Oh, yeah, there was a River World one. There was, like, one with water, uh, Power Pack 1, 
and two. Yeah, so I guess they, they have a lot more expansions than I thought they did. Um, so, and then the small World of Warcraft, which that one is clearly centered around World of Warcraft. Anyway, like, this was mainly a discussion, one, to just, just talk about games or a game that came out so long ago that, I mean, if it came out with a new edition just to, I don't know, I actually kind of like the, the artwork on it, too. Like, the presentation definitely looks dated, but, like, really what I would, what I'd much prefer to get, like, if they were to come out and be like, hey, it's Small World again, like a 15th anniversary or 20th anniversary, they, I would like to just see basically a all-in-one encompass thing. Like, because the game now, it came with a storage token, which was good for the time if you just had the base game, all the tokens like, would just be in their trays, but as you got expansions, they didn't fit anymore, and when I opened up this box, not having opened it in five to seven years, I was just, I was overwhelmed with just bags of, of tokens, and I was like, oh no, this is gonna suck, but it really wasn't that bad, um, honestly, and with, with 3D printing and everything, there's 100% a 3D printed insert that could probably be made for it but yeah i really think that this game is just a, an all-time classic that you can have a good time have a drink uh and have a small have a small war uh war game so on a scale of one to ten it's also very interesting because if i had done a discussion over this game probably when it came out i'd probably give it like what do what what did I give it? I actually should have that right here. Yeah, I had a 7.5 back when I played it, but as time has gone on and I play games like these and they're just so annoying to play or get to the table, um, or my tastes have just changed as I've gotten older, um, I'm gonna bump this up one whole point. I'm gonna give it an 8.5. Yeah, this one's this one's great, and it's a sin. That it took me so long to play it again, but yeah, it's it's just a nice surprise when you don't touch a game for a long time, and then you're like, yeah, yeah, this game this game is good. So yeah, that is my thoughts on Small World. Let me know what you think of the game in the comments below. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you. Hey everyone, thank you for watching, and I really hope that you enjoyed the video. If you would like to see more of my content, go ahead and click that subscribe button and the bell to be notified whenever I upload any new content. If you feel like supporting the channel, you can go ahead and click that Patreon link to be taken to my Patreon, and any help is truly appreciated. Other than that, stick around for any, any other run-throughs or reviews or cool top tens or whatever I feel like putting on. Other than that, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and have a wonderful whatever time of day it is for you.